Hey folks, it's Jim. We're going to go over the evolution of solar today. Um, and you can see on the right over here, uh, that's our Harbor Freight amorphous setup, which was the beginning, right? And it puts out 100 watts, as you know. But it's fairly big, bulky, comes in four separate pieces, and it really weighs a lot. Then we go to uh, monocrystalline, which then allowed us to shrink and get the same amount of power in a much smaller space as we evolved to monocrystalline, right? And it comes with a convenient suitcase up here, as you can see, uh, the Renogy, -E, and that's Renogy's first solar suitcase. They do an excellent job on those, by the way. And so then uh, we evolve one more time, and again, still putting out 100 watts to the Eclipse, which came out about a year ago. So you can see the evolution of solar, folks, how much smaller, and compact and lightweight everything keeps getting and we'll still get better in another two years or three years we're even going to have lighter more compact panels right the one on the end over here is just a 30 watt panel and this is a suggestion for some of you you may not need a lot of power if you're just running lights and charging cell phones so that makes it very convenient doesn't it to pack something that small out with you so you may only need a small monocrystalline panel to do the job for you and it's very easy to convenient to pack. That's the other reason why I like um, solar suitcases because they're so convenient to pack, aren't they? They're lightweight, they take up very little space. Pack up that, you know what I mean? And uh, how much space is that going to take? How heavy is it going to be? And all of that. If you permanently mount that, which is what I've decided I may do with the Harbor Freight on a small camper. The other thing is the declination um, of amorphous panels. Okay, These amorphouses will decline by 20% over six months to a year, whereas the monocrystallines will not decline as rapidly. So in two years, I'll still be getting 90 watts out of these, you know, between 90 and 100 watts, whereas this, in six months to a year of use, will be down to 80 watts or thereabouts, okay? Read your manuals and know and understand that about amorphous panels. Okay, and then they start holding at about 80. Uh, so don't worry, they are not going to lose all your power. But the declination also on these is much power. Not only are they smaller, lightweight, and easier to stow and pack, but they're going to hold their power factors uh, longer. And then you can see up here is 2 kilowatts of solar that runs my house. So you're kind of looking at the evolution of solar here, and I just wanted to share that. Um, the evolution of solar, and the thing about the solar suitcases, just so some of you know if you haven't seen them, is the charge controllers on the back of each suitcase, okay, and they fold up. Those panels fold right up on each other. They have nice little suitcase clips. Watch my video on the uh, <coughs> Renergy Solar Suitcase, which I'll be doing another one on the Eclipse. I just haven't done it. <coughs> Excuse me. It was cold this morning. Um, so, anyway, I just wanted to share that. Uh, they're very convenient and easy. Go online, look at the examples, and you'll see why. Um, you know, why I won't be packing amorphous panels with me in the field. Uh, certainly not for portable solar. If you want to mount those permanently or leave them set up somewhere, not bad. And I'm not knocking the Harbor Freight system, but now you can see the evolution, right? Okay, uh, Jim out.